I'll be that Philly ball, third with the flow, black other than rap, catch me on the black ball, Billy Paul, frames half the coat, rope chains all lost the coat. All right, uh, and something else to note, in contrast to polynomials, uh, non-polynomials, so non-polynomials now, non-polynomials, um, for these, they're higher derivatives, they're higher derivatives, 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 um, are opposite, basically. They are, uh, are never, never the zero function. They will never zero out, okay? Never the zero function. Okay, so just remember um, polynomials. I'll just abbreviate. So polynomials, uh, they're they're higher derivatives. Higher derivatives are eventually going to be the zero function. And non polynomials, their higher derivatives are never going to be the zero function. Okay, so those are the two things to keep in mind. Um, all right, now into the next thing. So basically, sometimes uh, now we're going to do an example of where sometimes you can find a pattern uh, for the higher derivatives of a formula. So I'll just put pattern, pattern uh, for higher, higher derivatives, derivatives um, of a function. Okay, so let's see an example of this. So uh, let's say I would give you y is equal to x to the negative 1 power. And this is our given function, our f of x. Okay, so let's see um, what happens. So if n, the nth derivative, so we're, uh, I'm going to introduce kind of a new notation uh, called the nth derivative, derivative. Okay, so for example, if n equals one, that means we're dealing with the first derivative. So that's a one up here, right? And then when n equals two, then we're dealing with f double prime, and then n equals three f triple prime, and I think I'll go to the fourth one. Uh, so we'll do n equals 4, so that would be at the fourth derivative of uh, f of x, okay? So anyways, um, let's calculate what these are. So f prime of x, if we differentiate that once, we're going to use the power rule here. We're going to bring down that negative 1 in front and subtract 1 from the power, so that would be minus a negative 1 minus another 1, so that would be a minus 2, okay? And then let's see what our second derivative is going to be. So if we bring that negative 2 down in front here, we get negative 1 times negative 2, so a positive 2, and then an x to the negative 3, if we just keep subtracting away 1 from the exponent every time we differentiate. Okay, so now let's see um, f triple prime of x, that's going to be negative or uh, positive 2 times a negative 3, so that would be a minus 2 times 3 here, and then an x to the negative 4th. And then the fourth derivative is going to be a... Uh, the negative 4 is going to come down, make that positive in front. Then we have a 2 and a 3 and a 4. They're all gathering there. And then x to the negative fifth. Okay, so let's see if we can detect a pattern uh, going on. So, so first of all, we notice that um, every other uh, derivative, every other nth derivative is, uh, like this one, for example, is a negative. For 1, it's a negative. For 2, for the second derivative, it's a positive. For the third derivative, it's negative again. And the fourth derivative, it's positive. So we see an alternating pattern here, right? So the alternating part, alternating, so that is basically going to be some factor of negative 1. Uh, and then do we say to the n or to the n plus 1? Let's see. So when n is 1, uh, we have a negative sign there. So if we put in a uh, 1 for the n up here, we would get that negative 1. Okay, so we need a negative 1 to the n somewhere in our formula. Uh, for or Our formula representation of a pattern of the higher derivatives of this function uh, f of x. Okay, so we're going to keep this part here. Okay, what else can we notice? Um, so let's see about the coefficients. What's happening with those? So when n equals 1, uh, we have that there's a 1 in front of the x. Okay, and then when n equals 2, we have a 2 in front. All right. So you might be thinking, okay, so the coefficient must be whatever n is, right? But then when we have n equals 3, what we have is a 2 times a 3. Uh, okay, that's a little bit weird. Now look, let's look at n equals 4. Then we have a 2 times a 3 times a 4. So this is actually, um, so in, on, uh, in front of these third derivatives and the fourth derivatives, we can actually write a 1 there because it's kind of like it's, it's there, but it's kind of invisible, right? Um, but that's like 1, 2, 3, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we actually see is a pattern of n factorial, okay? Um, so that's what it's going to be is because 
Uh, again, so the first one, it, there's a 1 there because 1 factorial is just 1. Um, for n equals 2, that's 2 factorial because 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, so that's just a 2. And then 3 factorial is going to be 3 times 2 times 1, which we do see here. And the fourth factorial is going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then uh, we can assume or predict, and you can, you can always check by taking the next derivative as well, like the fifth derivative. And then we'll see that we also get a 5 factorial there. So for the coefficients, so coefficient part, coefficients, we have the n factorial part, okay? So here I'm just kind of picking out things that we can notice uh, as far as the pattern, and then we'll put it all together on the next slide. Okay, so the last thing that I want to look at, um, so we have our x's, okay? And the important things here are the exponents on them, okay? So for the first derivative, uh, for n equals 1, we have a negative 2 up there, okay? Negative 2 power. For n equals 2, we have a negative 3 power, all right? And then for n equals 3, we have a negative 4 power, and for n equals 4, we have a negative 5 power. So what that implies is that uh, our exponent, so exponent part, we're going to look at that. So that would be equal to, uh, they're all negative, first of all, so we're going to have a negative sign there. And then what? Um, we have n, it, they always seem to be, the exponents here, they always seem to be one greater than what our n is, what, uh, what nth derivative we're on, right? So that would basically imply that we have an n plus 1 in here. Okay, so that would make sense, right? Because then uh, for the first derivative, we have uh, negative 1 plus 1 as our exponent. So that's a negative 2, which we do see. Okay, for n equals 2, if you plug that in, we get negative 3, which is the exponent here, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's take uh, these three portions here, these three little pieces, and piece them together into a formula for the uh, nth derivative. Okay. So what we're going to have is that f uh, of n of x, so the nth derivative of x, of f of x, is going to equal, so we're going to put the alternating thing here, so negative 1 to the n power, okay? The next thing will be the factorial, because that was the coefficient, all right? So n factorial goes there, and finally we have our x sitting at the bottom, right? And x is raised to the exponent, which is negative n plus 1 in parentheses, okay? All right, so this is our general formula for the uh, higher derivatives, or just any derivative in general. So this is the general formula formula uh, for nth derivative derivative uh, of our given f of x is equal to x to the negative one power. Okay. All right. So that pretty much does it for this video. Um, about higher derivatives. I hope that helped and good luck on your homework. Magic, spectacular with the visions of luck, feed a rock, one time fit magic.